is cold here in Australia and I've been out for four or five nights just shooting Jupiter because Jupiter is in the news right now. Uh, not only is there this cloud clearing event which is really cool and it only happens once every 12 years as far as we can tell. We're seeing the equator clearing up so it's browner. If you compare your photos of Jupiter from this year and last year you'll notice the difference it's quite stark. Now I've been following Christopher Go on his Facebook. If you don't follow him there that's probably the best way to check what's going on with Jupiter because he's always out with his 14 inch Celestron taking amazing shots and he's one of the best planetary images out there. But the other thing that we've seen is of course Wesley in Western Australia I believe he was the first to notice that there was a flake coming off the Great Red Spot. Uh, now this flake sort of got sheared off and got whipped off into the equatorial belt. Uh, but I think it's happening again and another flake has come off and has also been whipped into the equatorial belt. So is this the critical mass that we're seeing where the great red spot has shrunk and shrunk over the last 400 years to a point where it will no longer be able to maintain its stability and eventually just be sliced and diced into those equatorial belts and disappear. Uh, you'll notice with the other little storms they sort of roll across through the belts like they're being rotated and it looks like the Great Red Spot is going to succumb to the fate of these smaller storms too and eventually be whipped around into nothing. So I've been freezing my off every night trying to take a photo but I don't have a 14 inch like Christopher Go, so I have to make do with my Celestron nine and a quarter inch. But nine and a quarter, eleven, and if you can afford it, the fourteen. They they are pretty killer planetary rigs. That said, I just don't get the detail that we can see from the fourteen inch scopes. So when you want to compensate for that lack of equipment, a good little trick is to animate it. Because if you see an animation, it's sort of a bit of a novelty, and it will draw attention away from the fact that you have size issues. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Oh, no beer. No money. This video is sponsored by Bintel. Bintel are the largest Australian telescope shop. Uh, basically they sell everything astronomy related and I've been using them for years and years. Even before I had a relationship with them, uh, I do work for them as well now. But even before then I was using Bintel to get what I needed because they have such a great range. And their website works really well. I don't know who made their website but it's just freaking amazing. So go check out the Bintel website at www.bintel.com.au new subscriber. Uh, so the first step in taking a Jupiter animation is uh, well go outside and set everything up and then you'll notice that the clouds come over pretty much straight away. That's just God's sixth sense of humor and that's probably because you're an atheist. When you eventually get a clear spot and you've got Jupiter in your crosshairs make sure you crop that region of interest around the planet start grabbing your video frames and in fire capture I like to make sure I'm using the auto align function. Jupiter or whatever you're trying to animate will be dead center in all the video frames. You can use an after processing program like PPIP. Uh, personally I think that stands for pain in the posterior uh, because you can just do this in fire capture and then it will be aligned and then you don't have to really realign it in post. Uh, once you've got all your frames, you then of course merge all your frames if you're doing them in mono so that you end up with a series of frames. Uh, and you want to make sure that you, when you're compiling them, you don't get them out of order. So I have them nicely numbered from 1 through to 10 or however many frames you end up getting. Uh, once you've got your frames, then we jump into Photoshop. Okay, so animations in Photoshop are pretty easy. It's layer based. So we've got our background layer here. Uh, let's make a new layer, another layer. So we've got three layers in total. Now we'll draw something. That frame, that frame, that frame, that frame. Now say we want to animate. So we click this create video timeline. In this case, I want to make these much shorter. So I'll just make it a very quick animation. I'll just pull one out there. Now if I drag the slider, you see it alternates between them. And if I hit the play button, it's just alternating between these two images. So essentially we're going to do the same thing for our video frames. So now I've opened all the video frames in their sequential. So as I click through, they go through the frames. 
Uh, so here in this first one I'll just create video timeline and I'm going to shrink this down because we want it to be a short animation and if that's too small to see you can drag this out this way. So that's our first frame so I'm just going to go in here and copy and paste the next frame into here as a layer. Bam! Pull the length of that next one down and we've already got the animation started and essentially now I just repeat the process for all the other frames. Now I've got all the frames in so I can just adjust them to all be the same length. Now as we drag the slider it goes through our animation. Perfect. Now I like it to go forwards and then backwards so I usually just copy the layer here. Then we've got another stack of copied layers and I can have them go down the other way. So now we're going forwards and backwards and at this point you can export your animation. Change to GIF. Uh, you might want to play around with the compression settings so you don't really muck up because the um, compression here gets really bad. So have a play around with these settings and make sure you get the best possible quality. And well that's about it. I will um, leave some images here of people who have tagged me in their astronomy photos. Thank you for tagging me. I love seeing your work and it's encouraging to know that my videos help anyone at all. Be sure to check out Bintel of course, uh, www.bintel.com.au if you're in the Southern Hemisphere and need some astronomy equipment. They are a great team. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, thanks for all the support on the last video about Elon Musk. It was a bit of a dumpster fire in the comments. Uh, of course all the Elon fanboys thought I was too hard and all the people who were astronomers thought it was too soft, but I thought it was fair. Uh, but it got way more views than I normally get on any other video, which was amazing. Uh, so thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, this isn't an Elon or SpaceX bashing channel. This is just an astronomy channel. So I will keep bringing you astronomy news and I'll keep bringing you astronomy related videos to help you photograph the sky. Thanks very much. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.